We've been a leading designer of telescopes, uh, binoculars, spotting scopes, and most recently even microscopes. Our products has been used worldwide. Uh, probably we sold maybe close to a million products in the 50 years that we've been in existence. Um, not only uh, amateur astronomers uh, purchase our telescope, but our telescopes are also used in uh, schools, universities, uh, professional observatories, as well as uh, in the movie industry as well, too. So right now, at this time, I'd like to talk to you about one of the most innovative products that we've come out with in the past three years. And this, is, this is called the Sky Scout Personal Planetarium. And basically what it does is it identifies and locates celestial objects out in space. Now, I'm from the old school. When I was a young boy, I learned about astronomy and constellations and celestial bodies by reading books. With today's technology, a device such as a Sky Scout is able to actually locate, find, identify objects in space, and it also tells us what we're looking at, too. So it's like a whole complete uh, planetarium system right here in the pocket of my hand, right here, right here in the hand. Okay. So what it does, basically, uh, it has, it uses GPS technology, so it downloads the correct date, time, and location, so it knows where we are here on the Earth. It also has a gravitational sensors, so it knows what orientation I'm holding the sky scout, so it can calculate the angles to locate celestial objects up in the sky. And it basically has three basic functions, identifies, locates, and also teaches you about what you're looking at. But once I turn it on, it's going to GPS link. And once it links up to the satellite, it'll tell me where I am here on the Earth, and then I'm ready to start identifying, locating, and learning about celestial objects. Now, if I wanted to identify something, I could either go to this uh, up and down arrow key menu here, or I can just hit identify here. So I'm going to get my star. Let's say, for example, I see a bright star in the sky. I want to know, hey, well, what, what is that? Well, I aim it at it, I put the star in the center of the ring, and what it, what it has is eight red LED lights in the form of a circle. And once I hit the target button, which is right here on the top, it's going to tell me, wow, that's Jupiter. And because it has a three degree field of view, any other stars that's in the field of view, especially if you were out in a dark desert sky site where there's just millions of stars, it will list the, the objects in order of their brightness. The second feature of the Sky Scout Personal Planetarium is the locate feature. Let's say, for example, I wanted to know where Saturn is tonight. So what I could do is I can call up Saturn on the menu, and then I tell it to locate. Once again, I look inside the viewfinder here, and there's going to be a red flashing red LED light, and it's going to tell me, it's going to be blinking. So it's going to tell me, okay, move the Sky Scout this way. If it's further up, then the upper red LED light is going to start flashing. So then I'm going to move the Sky Scout upwards. And once I zero in on the target, the, the light is going to flash even faster. And once I do reach it, then all of the red LED lights is going to light up, letting me know, boom, I found Saturn. Yeah. Also, if I wanted to know um, constellations, it could also find constellations for me. And it could also display what the constellation looks like here on the screen. If I wanted to see, well, how many stars are in that constellation? Well, there's a feature here that can trace the actual stars in that constellation and take me on a guided tour of each star in the constellation. The third feature is that it has a learning feature. It provides comprehensive text and audio descriptions of what we're looking at. So when I wanted to, let's say, for example, I just found Saturn. I want to know more about it. Well, I just scroll down on the list here. Uh, go to the text description and then I can learn all about the details, how far away it is, how bright it is, uh, how many moons it has, and, and things of that nature. What this, what this Sky Scout also has is over 200 audio clips. So it's like having your own science teacher there with you too. It retails for about $199. Now the Sky Scout also features a built-in field guide. So there's also a six-part audio lesson. So instead of reading books, you can learn about the origins of astronomy, the history of it, just by listening in on the audio feature on the six-part audio lessons. There's also a glossary of terms defining uh, planets, uh, what is a galaxy, what is a binary star, so it's like having your own astronomical dictionary with you here, too. So. 
SD card slot. We actually have an SD card slot right here, right up here in the front. And what it does is it allows uh, you to increase your knowledge base. We have actually uh, released two SD cards, one of which is um, learning about stars. So what it does is it also enhances your audio descriptions and it also gives you more interactive text descriptions as well too. So if you want to learn, well, why is a car a certain color? What happens to stars once they explode, when they near the end of their life? These type of uh, extra cars will increase the knowledge base of the Sky Scout. It is a Sky Scout speaker. The result of its white clouds reflecting nearly two-thirds of all sunlight fall. There's basically three different types of telescopes in the amateur astronomy community that we use. One of which is the refracting telescope. Now this is the same type of telescope that Galileo first used 400 years ago. It's a simple design and it's what most people think about when they think about telescopes. A tube with a lens on the end and an eyepiece on the other. This, as you can see here, we have a two element objective lens which collects the light. So light comes in through the tube and it starts then, when, once it passes through the lens system, it refracts or bends into a cone. And once it reaches the far end of the tube, where, where it reaches what we call a focal point, that's where you normally would stick an eyepiece in and be able to observe an object. Um, it offers the highest contrast of any type of telescope design because unlike other type of designs that uses mirrors, this one it just has, there's no obstructions up in the front, so what you're getting is a clean path of light going all the way through the tube. The next type of telescope is called the Newtonian Reflecting Telescope. This was first put together by Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, with the reflecting telescope, light is entered through the tube, and it comes and it hits a, either a spherical or a parabolic shaped mirror. Well, I, I, what I like to say is called a concave type mirror. And the mirror then reflects the light back to a 45 degree angle flat mirror, which then redirects it out through the tube. Uh, reflecting telescopes are really ideal for, astronom for astronomical uh, observing because it uses a mirror. One of the drawbacks, though, however, is that it has a secondary obstruction. So when light enters into the tube, there's still an element here that's going to be blocking some of the light. Therefore, uh, some contrast is going to be lost. The third type of telescope that's used in, that's really popular among amateur astronomers is the schmidt cassegrain Telescope. This type of telescope uses uh, the best of both worlds, the best of what a refracting telescope has to offer as well as a reflecting. In this diagram, you can see here, there is a lens group in the front, a spherical uh, secondary mirror and a correcting plate. So the light enters into the tube, passes through the correcting plate lens, which, which uh, flattens the field and corrects for any type of optical aberrations. Light then hits the primary mirror in the back. In this case, this is an eight inch telescope, so eight inch mirror and then redirects it to the secondary mirror, which then shoots back down straight through the, through the baffle tube here um, to the uh, diagonal and the eyepiece. So instead of having a super long telescope, these type of telescopes are more compact and much smaller, but easier to manage and portable. This telescope right here is actually the baby brother of the 9 and a quarter and the 11 inch model. This is actually the smallest one. This telescope from, from the base, the forearm, and, and the tube here, weighs 42 pounds. The tripod weighs 27 pounds, but they are. Uh, my hands off to the engineers who designed this telescope because they made it really ergonomically friendly. They have handles, one handle here, as you can see, and the other handle is here. So you're supporting the weight like this. So even though this telescope weighs 42 pounds, it doesn't feel like 42 pounds. But this type of telescope uh, uses GPS function as well too. There's a built-in GPS receiver, 16 channel. Uh, once it links up to the satellite, uh, it downloads the, your correct date, time, and location so it knows exactly where you are here on the Earth. And from there, we would go ahead and do a, uh, align the telescope. Now, we have several different types of alignment. Our most popular and easiest method is called Skyline. So even if you don't know anything about astronomy, all you would have to do is align the telescope on any three bright object. It doesn't matter if it's the moon, it could be a planet, or a bright star. You just go ahead and slew the telescope, you turn it on once it links up, and you manually slew it, you center it, you aim it, you get it centered in the field of view, you hit align, and then you slew it off to the next object, and you do that three times. So as a mark. So let's say, for example, I wanted to see Mars. I, I would select Mars with my hand control, I hit enter, and then the telescope will slew by itself all the way until it finds Mars. Once it stops, I look at the eyepiece, there's Mars.